What is going on guys? I hope you all are having a great day. Today is a pretty exciting day. We're going to get some painted goodies or some powder coated goodies I should say for the 12 valve. As you can see we've already got everything pulled off. We got our master cylinder cap. We got our intake side manifold I guess you would say cover. I'm not really sure what the correct pronounce it. We got my daughter's baby that is not getting powder coated. But we got all of the valve covers, the fuel lines. That is not getting powder coated today. Me and my brother may do a giveaway with that 24 valve uh, valve cover, but we don't know the plans on it yet. We don't know how people are going to enter, uh, but it will be powder coated eventually. And we have our alternator bracket that we are going to powder coat all today using our stuff that we've already loaded up in the truck. So you guys are going to see that here in a minute, but we've already got some stuff loaded up in the truck. Our Eastwood powder coat gun, which we are going to be doing a review today on. But as you can see, the engine bay is pretty much empty right now we got a lot of things out of here but I've got all new gaskets coming for the in all intake side new gaskets uh, all new valve cover gaskets uh, a couple sensors a couple intake air temperature sensors a couple coolant temperature sensors and uh, you know some oil pressure gauge thing or not oil pressure gauge oil pressure sensor just all in all trying to make this thing run a lot better of course we got a new starter for it if you guys didn't know our starter did go bad this video is coming soon uh, can't wait to show you guys that starter. That's going to be an awesome video. Uh, but we've got our injectors right here if you guys missed that video. Also, I have injectors going on this thing. So make sure you guys are staying tuned to these videos. Make sure, more than anything, you guys are leaving a like down below because I couldn't tell you how much that helps out as far as growing the channel, growing. Uh, you know making the videos get seen more so make sure you guys are leaving a like down below It really really helps a lot Especially if you do enjoy the videos so that I know which videos you guys like best So let's go ahead get everything loaded up in the truck And then we're gonna go over to the chases and get some stuff powder coated by the way If you missed last video the reason why we're not powder coating it here is because I don't have my electrical connection Ready yet for my stove, but I do have everything else I need just not the power source for the stove to do it all in-house guys I haven't updated you since I got here there are engines everywhere Chase is over there Chase will say what's up What's up? <laughs> this is his shop and his brothers and man they have an awesome shop they can do any of these colors they are the professionals that is why I'm here what's this CP3 going on um, one of those uh, that's just off that white truck out there we're pulling the engine out of oh okay okay nice man yeah that's all the injectors and push rods and rockers and everything out of that truck getting a short block so we've got to keep all that stuff to put back in the new engine when we get it here so sweet man do you want to tell them what all you guys do over here at iron ape coatings uh, and fab mainly mainly we powder coat that's one of our main sources of income um, we do work on Cummins too it's our favorite brand of truck it's Dodge yeah, uh, yeah. we do anything from motor swaps engine builds turbo kits uh, traction bars custom lifts uh, do a little bit of ATV work too, just depends. Yeah. There are bikes, there's a lot of ATVs outside too. Yeah, so. But their information will definitely be in the description down below. They got all these different colors that you guys can get. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer like me, I definitely suggest this Eastwood gun that we're about to use. We have it, we just unboxed it. They actually started on an Eastwood gun. 
way back a long, long time ago before they had the dual voltage, but they actually recommended the Eastwood gun. They said it was very good, but that was their trusty dusty until they got their good. Oh, wow. Shit. <laughs> Almost died. But their Encore, it's a Nort Nortson, and then Encore is, I guess, the make, or I mean the model or something? Yep, the model. Uh, at the time, about three years ago, it was the best one you can buy, but you know, of course, they, technology. Some, technology gets better every year, but I still, that's, so far, Nortson's my favorite brand. You've got uh, Gima, which is another good company. Um, uh, who else do you got? I mean, Waggler. Waggler builds good powder guns, too, but... For me and my brother, we've always just liked Nordson, so. But this is like top of the line, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And the Eastwood gun, would you recommend it for, say, just the everyday guy? Everyday oh, yeah, everyday guy, do it yourself for, um, it's, I mean, the price point, you can't beat it. That's, that's what I said, That's man. the best part, is just the, the cost of it. Um, and it does a really, really good job of, like, like you said, when we first bought it, they didn't have the dual voltage at the time. I mean, it was we literally bought it as soon as it first came out, and I think it was like four years ago, four or five years ago, yeah. whenever Eastwood released it. I can't quite remember. It's been a good little bit. Um, and we actually still did uh, dual-stage colors and three-stage colors with it. So, I mean, you can do it. Uh, it just, you have to play around with it, figure it out, figure out what works the best for you. Um, I know it's not sometimes the Faraday cage effect in corners is kind of hard to get get over with the Eastwood mm -hmm. gun, but... They say the dual voltage actually is supposed to help with the corners supposed, Yeah, a lot. exactly, it's supposed to help. So we'll see today. Lot, so. Have you ever used the dual voltage one before? I never have. So we'll see today. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I've even showed it yet, but here's the dual voltage gun. I'll show you guys the part number and I'll leave a link down in the description below to this product if you guys are interested in it. But here is the part number right there in the corner. 11676. You can find this on their website. Very affordable price, actually. And we got a ton of tons of attachments. Uh, you know, you got your tape, just your random stuff. We got our powder. We're going to be putting everything in gloss black today, but I got some other colors. We got, of course, chicken wire, a uh, filter for the gun. Just a tons of stuff in here. Uh, I don't know if I've showed it all, but definitely useful stuff that Eastwood sells alongside with, the, or, or they have the option to sell alongside with this gun. But I was showing you guys a second ago. Got a nice 24 valve head in here right now. Yeah, I've got to go to the machine shop and get sent off. That's the head that's going on the short block that'll be coming in within the next week or two. Nice. Now you even got an Eastwood TIG loader. Yeah, Look at actually, that. yeah. Uh, it's it's dusty. Dusty, but, uh, crusty. Dude, that's the only way to have equipment, man. That is. Uh, that's been a dang good welder. Uh, that one's built a lot of turbo kits, actually. <laughs> that's one of the first things we started out too. Now, granted, you know. We won't pan over there and see what we got now. <laughs> oh, Lincoln. Hey, that's big money right there, man. But hey, actually, and they're, uh, I guess we're, we like Eastwood too. We got an Eastwood plasma cutter. I suggest that for anybody wanting to get into plasma cutting um, and just, you know, start out small. Don't want to spend a fortune on a plasma cutter. That's, that's a dang good setup right there. Um, and uh, I've actually, uh, one of the businesses we used to be in and help out with was uh, we built water jet and plasma tables. Um, and we always used hypertherm products. Um, of course, it's not a hypertherm, but at the same time, you're not spending 3500 bucks for it. And that one right there, I've been really, really impressed with it, uh, with actually the material cut and how good of a straight line it can cut. Um, and the thickness. Thickness has been really impressive, too, for it only being a... I can't remember what amp is this one. I don't even remember. I don't even know if it says 60. Okay. So, yeah, I've been impressed with it. So, there you go. Another shout out to Eastwood. If, if hey, anybody yeah, wants man. a plasma cutter, they, they, they built a pretty good one to get into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have a huge, they also have an airplane. They have an airplane outside. We'll have to show you guys. And they also have probably one of, probably the best first gen in the country. Honestly, top, at least top five. First gen? I, first gen. The first gen you have out there? Oh, he, uh, he's got it right now. He's actually driving it around where our buddy is. Are you serious? They, nope. you, they took it? Oh, it was well, just oh, there wait, wait, wait. you're talking about uh, the flatbed. My bad. Yeah. No, no, it's out there. Yeah, it's out there. You got oh. us, That's probably top five in the country. Yeah. But let me, let me show them, and then we'll go show them out there. We just got done sandblasting our fuel lines. Man, sandblasting is fun, but not fuel lines. Fuel lines freaking suck, man. Oh, you, you got all these you tiny little here. brackets and everything, and plus... But, I mean, hey, they got a huge sandblast cabinet, so we got everything. Oh, I actually got to get this master solenoid. I just got done sandblasting that. Let me turn off your light. 
But yeah, we'll get back to this in a second and we'll throw some powder on. Let's go check out that first gen out there, man. I know they're going to be dying to see that thing. Yeah, actually, yeah, we probably cleared all the suspension on it. Yeah, um, this, they, a lot of them probably have already seen this truck before. Yeah, they probably have. Uh, Cummins, PJ Trailer. You don't know who owns it. Duramax. At the Brown Pearl. Yeah. Um, his is Instagram. But it's one of our good buddies. It's dirty right now. It's in for some, uh, some motor work. Not that you know it's all 12 out, not that it needs it, but he wants it. It's, <laughs> it's just leaking pretty bad. But, yeah. Man, this thing is unbelievably clean in person, guys. But actually, yeah, sorry, all these purlins are right here. But yeah, you can. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good idea. Axles Completely leaf Completely powder coated. What color is this? It is, uh, the, all the red is Illusion Cherry, and all the brown, or well, bronze is Chrome Bronze. And those are all prismatic powder colors. Nice, man. It's freaking sick, dude. Do you know the suspension setup on it? Uh, yes, it is a two inch leveling kit up front, and it is factory in the rear. Nice, dude. With uh, 20, 20 inch uh, fuel wheels, the cleavers, um, the most offset you can get on the fuel cleavers in the back, um, and then the front is just the only offset you can get on the eight, eight by six point five lug pattern. It's a, a Bradford built bed. It's the uh, I can't remember what they call that bed. It's the skinnier bed with the six inch fenders is what he wanted. Is the look he wanted instead of going with the full width bed. Yeah. Just look at the size difference. The Toyota versus <laughs> the first gen. That is insane. That is goals for sure. Even though mine's not four-wheel drive, so I won't go crazy with the one I have currently because I want to eventually get into a four-wheel drive and I don't want to go through the hassle of swapping everything over. I'd rather just buy a four-wheel drive first gen, but good Lord, man. First time I seen this truck was at a truck meet in, I think, Montgomery. Yep. The Montgomery truck meet two years ago. Yep, that, that was and as soon As soon as I seen it, I was like, man, I got to get a first gen. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's probably the cleanest first gen I've seen in person in my life. But then his truck, Chase's truck, what you got done to it? Uh, that one right there has got a single S366, uh, ATS dual fuelers. I've got a fast fuel pump for it, just haven't installed it yet. And leveling kit and wheels and tires, and that's pretty much it. And it's tuned too, actually, uh, Anarchy tuning. Nice man. We're not even gonna tell him how much y'all got that trailer for. Yeah. <laughs> not even gonna talk about that. Colton's Duramax over there. That thing is clean as all hell. Took the turbo off of it though. The freaking 500 series turbo. Yep. That's their airplane. They got tons of stuff out here. Tons of trucks they're working on. Side by side dirt bikes. They got a burnt up fourth gen over there. There's a huge story behind that. We'll leave that for another video. And then they got like tons of first gens in the back. You probably can't even see them. Dirt bikes galore. Oh, you want to show them the acid that you dip the valve covers in? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Just to show them the kind of like the process, the prep, the proper yeah, way. Uh, if you've got paints or any type of paint or uh, powder coat, existing powder coat, uh, instead of just having to sit there and sandblast it all day long, because especially sandblasting powder coat is a like pain in the tail, you'll be there all day. It actually, from sandblasting it, the friction will make it all gooey and really, really tough to get off. So you can just, uh, B17 acid is what we use and it's just in a barrel. Um, don't really have anything to dip in it, but I mean, it's just, just like any, the any nasty, acid. The only, nasty stuff, Yeah, but if it only, cleans very well. Oh yeah, if only you could smell, right? <laughs> well, if only you could smell through the computer. <laughs> this stuff smells awful. Yeah, it does. But it works. Exactly. That's awesome, man. Tons of stuff I didn't know about powder coating. There's definitely a lot more to it than you would think. But let's go back inside. We'll catch back up with you guys once we get some powder laying on. Alrighty, guys. So it's pretty dark in here, but this is their oven, and the echo is pretty bad as well. But we have everything hung up. As you can see, doing the fuel lines is very, very fun. You have to do them one by one because you don't want them touching because if powder sticks together and then heats up, 
at 400 degrees, it actually sticks together like super glue and you have to acid dip them in order for them to come apart. So we got all the little brackets, small brackets for the fuel lines all hung up and all the fuel lines. The fuel lines is what's taken the longest part and then we got the intake manifold side cover, intake cover I guess you'd call it. And then the other three valve covers are right here. And you can't barely see it, but we got the alternator bracket on that side. And the acid dip really made it turn a brown color. It looks almost rusty on camera, but in person it doesn't feel or necessarily even look rusty. It just It's a brown color. What we're doing now, now that we've got everything cleaned up and in the oven, um, we're going to do what's called outgassing. We're going to heat it up to about... 350 degrees or so for about 10 minutes and that way anything any little bit of oils that's left over from us handling it and anything will all bake off um, for there's a set of wheels in there that are cast it actually it'll draw their any air bubbles or anything that might be down in the cast aluminum will actually the air pockets will come out uh, while it's out gassing you have to do this you don't always have to do it but it's always a general good idea to do it because if you don't if you've ever a good way to tell that something hasn't been out gassed is if you look at it and you're looking at some powder coat and it looks like it's got a bunch of really really fine pinholes in it. it means it probably wasn't outgassed or wasn't outgassed long enough and the actual air that's trapped in the aluminum is coming out and it just makes really really small air pockets little bubbles looks like a bunch of little needle holes in the actual finish and it doesn't it, it's not near strong um, water and moisture then can go travel down through the little pinholes and it can start lifting the powder up and everything so it's just a good idea and it for a good strong finish, you always want to outgas your parts. So, just cool. turn, the, good turn the oven on. Uh, we actually we just got it set at 415 right now, 415 degrees. Uh, right now, inside the oven, it's 82 degrees. It just kicked on. Um, it'll ramp up pretty quick. It'll take probably about 15 minutes to get to 350. And we'll just, after it gets to 350, we'll just set a timer for about 15 minutes. And whatever goes up to there, from there, it'll be fine. Cool. Well, we'll catch up with you guys once we get to that point. All right, guys, so we've done about four or five lines so far. Maybe, yeah, this is our fifth one we're doing. We're shooting at 5 to 10 PSI right now using a regulator. Uh, and we also got the filter that Eastwood provides us with. Doing this is a lot of fun. All you got to do is press this button and actuate it. Isn't that what it's called? Yep. You just Actuator. The charge and the powder. Get that okay. charge in it. The charge and the powder. I got my buddy holding the box over here, which controls the voltage. You can adjust it from low voltage, 15 kilovolts, or high voltage, 25 kilovolts. So it's got two different modes that you can use. Uh, I guess that's why it's called the dual voltage power coat gun. Uh, you just want to be careful that this can shock you, so don't ever get in front of it, especially when you charge it. Yeah, but, you can actually show them, you know, put it up against the piece that's ground and hit the button real close. Like that, you can shock <laughs> it. So. But uh, so right now I'm just going to show you guys, they actually showed me on a couple of them how they do it and uh, it's pretty simple and it's actually a lot of fun. So uh, just starting at the bottom, doing it just, doing like a circular motion, going up, small circles, and then doing a 180 from that last spray, actuating it, then doing circles. This gun sprays very well actually. And then getting kind of far away from it and just okay. filling in some uh some spots maybe you didn't cover.
Back in there. Yep. Nice and clean. The cleanup process for powder is so much better than paint. I know. And just come here where it pulls it in at. Contamination when you go with you know another color. Okay. We'll hold that one real yeah. quick. I gotta grab all this stuff. We'll just... Chase has already put all of our parts in the oven. They're cooking now. How long do you think it's gonna take? You said uh, 25 minutes? Yeah, roughly 25 minutes uh, at temp, so. So 400 degrees? Yeah, 400 degrees. Um, should take about 15 minutes to get to 400, and then we'll just do, we'll do 15 minutes at 400. 15 minutes at 400, okay. Yeah. Cool, man. So I guess we'll show you guys the final product. I know this video is probably getting really long, but hopefully you're getting something out of it. Hopefully it's informative for you. I know I've got a lot out of it today. We just stepped in there and looked at the fuel lines, man. Those things look really, really good. Once it cools down a little bit, we'll show you guys the final result for everything. Oh, by the way, if you guys have ATV, here, I don't want to waste that light, but if you guys have four wheelers, side by sides, anything like that, big truck wheels you want powder coated, this is what these guys do literally every single day, man. So if you're doing like the do-it-yourselfer, I suggest that Eastwood gun 100%, like just doing small engine bay parts. But if you if you want someone who's really, really good at what they do, who has professional equipment, who has the big oven, they can do axles. I mean, you guys seen the Leaf Springs axles on that first gen out there earlier. This is what they do every day, man. This is a, you said graphite gray? You're doing uh, these wheels in? Kingsport? Yep. This is going on a Razor, you said? Yeah, Razor 1000. Razor 1000. They do suspension parts, all sorts of stuff, man. Their information will definitely be down in the description below. You guys should definitely check them out. Try to video as much as I can. But we've actually got a decent amount of work done tonight. So, But it's getting late. Uh, as soon as we get those parts out of the oven, I'll be heading out of here and we'll end out this video. Alrighty, guys. So here is the final product. We could not be happier how this stuff turned out, man. It turned out really, really good. I, I will be showing you guys, so stay tuned. I will be showing you guys exactly what this stuff looks like when it's on the truck and uh, in better lighting. But man, this stuff looks really, really good. Hopefully it'll, lighting's really bad over here, but you guys can get an idea. You can kinda see what's going on. just turned out really freaking good real clean real clean job fuel lines turned out just about as good as I possibly think they could turn out this Eastwood gun definitely does a great job but that is gonna do it for this video guys I appreciate you sticking all the way to the end I know it was kind of long so I hope you guys stuck all the way to the end I hope you learned something that I definitely learned a lot today about powder there's definitely there's definitely a lot more that goes into it than I thought initially Man, I could not be happier how this stuff turned out. I'm ready to get this stuff home, get it put on the first gen. We're, we're going to show you guys what it looks like. It should clean up the entire engine bay and make it look a ton better. So drop a like down below if you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys are checking out Eastwood's product. I'll put the dual voltage gun down in the description below as, long as, uh, as well as their website where you can see all the other products they have. I'll also be putting the information down in below for Chase and Colton's business for Iron Ape Coatings and Fab. They have a Facebook page as well. I'll put that down in the description below as well as their Instagram page. Uh, definitely, definitely check them out. If you're looking to get some jobs done that are just too big or too, maybe they're too big to go into a small oven or something you can do yourself, definitely check them out. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I know I rambled, rambled on a little bit, so I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you're following the Instagram and Snapchat. I'm always posting things on there as soon as they happen. So like tonight, I was posting a lot of things on there. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. You got me rocking